So I go to a lot of meetups and workshops mainly aimed at junior developers and a lot of the questions they ask are around, I want to be a front-end developer but I'm just not sure where to start. And, and I totally get it. It is a huge world out there, especially in the last like five or so years, the, the front end landscape has just exploded. And I don't believe there's a single right path to go down to become a good front end developer. I think there's many different ways to approach it and many different a avenues you can take. And I think it's quite important to follow your excitement as well when you're looking at that. So if you're playing around with something and it leads you down a path, like follow that. If, if, you're, if you're into that, go, go down that. Because you want your learning and you want your journey to be exciting, not, not boring and mundane. But if I talk about my own experience, uh, the first two companies I worked for out of university didn't use any significant front-end libraries other than a bit of jQuery. And that was kind of a blessing in disguise because it got me a good foundational like set of tools and knowledge and all that um, on just vanilla JavaScript. So I learned all the quirks and all the weirdness that everyone hates JavaScript for. I learned to live with it because that's what I had to work with to solve problems. And later on in my career, I've definitely built up on that. Uh, and, and it's been a lot easier to build up on, on top of that and to learn new libraries on top of that rather than learning the entire uh, stack uh, all at once. So I would totally encourage you to learn like the foundational parts of JavaScript, how functions work, how closures work, how this works, prototypes even. Um, you can then start getting into like ES6 and learning how map, reduce, uh, destructuring, spreading, all those fantastic tools that you can take to any library and apply those to solve problems and add value. And I just wanted to finish off on my recent hiring experience at REA Group. Uh, part of the hiring exercise is pretty common is they give you a take home project, you get about a week to do and uh, submit it. And once they review it and they like your stuff, they'll get you in to, uh, to extend that solution. And when I, got the, when I got the challenge, I knew that REA use React very heavily on their front end. But at that time, I, I knew React was a thing and I knew it was created by Facebook. That was about it. And I thought, do I, do, I try to, do I try to build it in uh, the library that they use or do I stick to what I know best and what I'm most comfortable with and develop with that? And I chose to do the submission in just vanilla JavaScript. And I think that that, that was probably the right choice. And if I could go back, I would do it again because that that enabled me to present my best self to them. Uh, you know, I'd built up ways that I like to code, my flavor and my sort of uh, little quirks of development. Everyone has their own style. And I could showcase that and present them and justify why I did things this way versus that way. If I had tried to learn React all in that one week and write a, uh, write a submission, I, I don't think it would have been the quality that I would have been happy with. So taking away, I, I think having that foundational level of knowledge of JavaScript is going to really, really help you. Don't worry about Angular, React, Vue, Ember, if anyone uses that anymore. Uh, worry about learning the tools that you can take to each of those libraries. And then the last point is people often ask me, well, you know, shouldn't you rather present what they want to see in the language you, you want to see? And wouldn't they just say, what is this guy from 2005 using vanilla J JavaScript, you know? And that's an answer I'm going to cover off in the next video. So stick around and hopefully I can address that for you.